This is Jonathan Kahn. We are standing at a pivotal moment in American history and world history, a moment that can permanently seal our nation's course and the course of the world for good, for bad, for calamity, or redemption. America and much of Western civilization was founded on a biblical foundation stone, but it's turned away from that foundation. We have not only driven God out of our public life and have called what is good evil and what is sin good, but we have sacrificed the lives of over 60 million unborn children. And America's fall from God is not only progressing, it's accelerating to the point that it's no longer just a falling away, but a war against the purposes of God. I wrote in the harbinger of the signs of judgment that appeared in the last days of ancient Israel, warning of calamity, and that these same signs of warning have now appeared on American soil. The biblical template concerning judgment is that the nation so warned is given a space of time to return or to head for judgment and calamity. We are now in that window of time. But if America continues on its present course, that window will come to an end and there will come a flood that will begin the end of religious freedom, even usher in persecution and seal America's fall. And if America falls, it will affect the entire world. This year, 2020, is crucial as it leads to a presidential election in which the stakes are higher and the necessity of prayer more critical than ever before. And even if the election goes in the direction of biblical values and righteousness, if we don't see a spiritual turning, an awakening, a repentance, revival, then all the political, legal, judicial, and cultural efforts will ultimately fail or be undone. We have a window of time, and the purpose of that window is to return and for revival. Without that return, America will be lost. What can we do? What can you do? In the days following 9-11, people flocked to houses of worship, and it looked as if there could have been a spiritual revival, an awakening. But it never came, because there was no repentance. And without repentance, without a turning back, there can be no revival. But I have seen, once in my life, the hand of God change the course of American and world history. And it all began not in the halls of government, but with the people of God who gathered in a sacred assembly in our nation's capital with the scripture, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their sinful ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. It can happen again. But if we don't respond now, at this most critical moment, we may never have the chance to do so again. Since the time of 9-11, I've been calling for return, for repentance, for revival, not only as individuals, but as a nation, according to 2 Chronicles 7.14. At the same time, a faithful man of God, Kevin Jessup, has for years carried the burden of a sacred assembly for that same purpose of restoration. We are convicted that now is the time. Therefore, this is the announcing of the return, the national and global day of prayer and repentance. It will be a day and more than a day, a time and a season for the movement for prayer, repentance, return, and revival. The central day will be Saturday, September 26th in a sacred assembly according to what is laid forth in scripture to take place in our nation's capital on the Washington Mall. For those who can't make it or want to do something where you are, then gather together in your states, your cities, in your towns, in your houses of worship, in your homes, or be part of those gatherings already planned. This will take place not only 40 days before the presidential election, but also on the 400th anniversary of the sailing of the Mayflower in the days of America's founding and dedication to God. And surrounding the day of return on September 26th will be 10 days known from ancient times as the 10 days of repentance, starting with the Feast of Trumpets and ending on the Day of Atonement to set as a special time to intensify our prayers, our intercessions, 
for repentance and revival, September 18th to September 28th. Believers and leaders who are already part of the return include everybody from Pat Robertson to Dr. James Dobson, from Billy Graham's daughter, Ann Graham Lotz, to Martin Luther King's niece, Alveda King, and many, many more. When does the return begin? Right now. How? With you and me as we commit this time and this year for return, prayer, repentance, and revival. To commit first to our own repentance and to begin actually living in revival. And then to pray for others, the return and revival of our nation and the world. You who are parents, begin by leading your families in revival. Ministers, lead your groups in revival. Pastors, lead your churches into revival. Leaders of ministries, movements, and denominations, lead your people into revival. And spread the word to everybody you can. Let the believers, pastors, and churches in your areas know. Use social media, use everything you can to spread the word so they can have a part. And if you're watching this and you're not sure you know God, or that your life is in his will, then come to him now, or come back to him now, and then come join in in the return. So I invite you to come to the nation's capital on the Washington Mall, September 26th, 2020. Plan now, you can rent buses, trains, cars, planes, however you can come, or gather wherever you are. And if you're watching this from a nation outside of America, you can be part of bringing the return to your nation by doing what I've set forth in this message and going to the return website for more information. I'll be sending out more messages as we go forth. But for now, for more information, to have a greater part to represent the return in your area or to stay up to date, if you're not already on that site, go to the website for the return, which is easy to remember. It's thereturnwebsite.org. That's thereturnwebsite.org. The Lord is calling. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their sinful ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. The movement and chance we have before us now may never come again. If we don't return now, we may pass the point of no return. So now, in view of the calling, and of the moment before us, let us each rise to that call, to do what he has called us to do, to believe for great and mighty things we know not of, to return and seek to live in revival and become messengers of revival. It's time to break up our fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord as never before. It's time to return.